Hey guys and I'm back again with the video and in this video we would be covering the psychometric theories of intelligence. So as discussed in the last lecture, uh, there are two broad approaches uh, to understanding the world of intelligence. One is psychometric versus the information processing approach. And uh, in this video we will start with the very first theory that falls under the psychometric theory of intelligence. First we would be covering all the psychometric theories and uh, which would be followed by all the theories that fall under the information processing approach. And to cover all these theories we would be kind of following a format. Yeah. So what is that format? First we would be covering the proponent of the theory. right? So I want you guys to you know keep the structure in mind so that it becomes easier for you to write in the exam to you know to kind of get a structure of every theory that we're kind of going to read about or study about. So first is the proponent of the theory. Next is the name of the theory. Name of the theory, right? Followed by what does the theory talk about, right? So what is it all about? what is the theory all about like or what kind of concept what concept does it want of uh, want all of us to understand right what does it bring about for the world of intelligence so what is the theory all about and the last one last but not the least is the criticism of the theory if there are any right i mean definitely there are going to be no theory is perfect so this is uh, the broad structure that you will be following for all the theories, but did they fall under the psychometric approach or they fall under the information processing approach? Now that we're clear with this, let's start with the very first theory of intelligence that we will be covering that falls under the psychometric approach, right? Right, so the first theory, the proponent of the theory is Alfred Binet, right? And he is very, very important for the world of intelligence because he was the very first person who formalized the concept of intelligence. Therefore, we're going to focus or kind of study about his theory. That will be the first aim. And his theory uh, falls under the psychometric approach. So the proponent of the first theory is Alfred Binet who was again, again mentioning it because he is very important for the world of intelligence because he was the very first person who formalized the concept of intelligence. And what is the name of the theory? So you can call it in any ways, uni or mono or one factor theory of intelligence, right? So, and you know, when we discuss what theory kind of talks about, we will be able to reason out that why is this theory actually called the one factor or the mono factor or the uni factor theory of intelligence, right? Right. So again, we have covered the name and we've covered, we've covered the proponent. Now let's dive into what the theory spoke about. And I'll be mentioning the major points. Uh, like the keywords of the theory, right? So, what this is like the most simplest, this is the simplest theory that you will ever find uh, which belongs to the psychometric approach because what it actually tried to do is differentiate a more intelligent person from a less intelligent person, right? On the basis of just a, or just some number of abilities, right? So, the very first thing the, that the theory by Alfred Binet, which is the one factor theory tried to bring about, is differentiating a more intelligent person from a less intelligent one. Now you would ask me, what was the basis of this, right? that okay we are differentiating a more intelligent person from a less intelligent one but what was the formula that Alfred Binet used for this what was the basis of this classification or of this differentiation as we as we're going to put it right what was it so he said that you know intelligence kind of consists of one similar set of abilities one similar set of abilities and this becomes our second keyword Right. 
so you know we look at examples or we look at illustrations in just a while but what he said is that intelligence consists of one similar set of abilities and these set of abilities can be used in doing anything or everything in life so we're going to deal with a lot of challenges we're going to be doing many very many activities throughout our lifetime and if we have these set of abilities we can do anything we can do everything right so that is how you know on the basis of the presence of these abilities or on the basis of the level of the abilities that we possess uh, we would be a more intelligent person or a less intelligent one so again it's a very simple theory and actually that was the major criticism of the theory which we would be covering at the end of this video but this is the crux of the theory that on the basis of this one similar set of abilities alfred binet tried to differentiate between a more intelligent person from a less intelligent one right and that is why because he's focusing here you can see it's a one similar set of abilities right that is why his theory was known as the one factor theory of intelligence that's why i said that once we discuss what the theory kind of brings about we will be able to reason out that why the theory by alfred binet is referred to as the one factor theory right now let's look at this theory uh, with the help of um, with the help of an illustration hopefully uh, you know this will make it a bit more interesting for you guys so according to alfred binet we have a fund of intelligence okay just like we have financial funds right so in which we have different types of financial resources that we can count in these type uh, in you know in these financial resources or in these financial funds we have different financial resources whether in the form of government bonds or whether in the form of bitcoin or, or cash liquid cash or deposits etc similarly we have a fund of intelligence as well and these this fund of intelligence so fund of intelligence consists of different a set of a diff, set of different abilities okay let's call it a set of different abilities now here you have to focus on different right different abilities that means these abilities can be many right again let's take examples decision making can be an ability right judgment can be an ability what else um abstract thinking can be an ability reasoning can be another ability and the list can go on but these are i'm just giving you example obviously he did not specify these abilities but i'm giving you these examples to maybe you know make this interesting a bit more interesting for you guys so what he said is that we have a fund of these abilities right and uh, so the, uh, the fund of abilities can kind of consist of more abilities versus less abilities or even the less or the level of abilities can also differ from person to person and that would kind of determine how intelligent we are so when i'm saying plus here that means maybe the level of abilities is more or maybe the number of abilities is more in a person that means that person would be more intelligent right is it becoming i hope it's becoming clear now that's why i'm kind of using these illustrations you know and um, sorry more intelligent uh, i have i hope you're getting that and again if the person is kind of having less level of these abilities the, that the abilities exist in them but they are of, of less level and maybe even the number of abilities are less in the person so he would be less intelligent i hope that's becoming clear to you guys that is why i am using this uh, you know i am using uh, these illustrations now another thing that might make the theory interesting for you guys let's look at another illustration it it's going to be pretty easy so don't worry about it let's look at you know three of these abilities let's for example it led decision making okay let's look at judgment and uh, let's look at maybe problem solving okay and let's look at three people let's look at three people so the first person is highly intelligent okay h i i mean is highly intelligent so and the second person is kind of average at intelligence as i'm writing the short form so please remember that i'm referring to the short forms and third maybe he has a low intelligence right so we are taking talking about three people here so a person with high intelligence would be excellent at decision making 
excellent at judgment excellent at problem solving right similarly a person who is who has average intelligence would be average or rather maybe good we can say at decision making average or good at judgment average or good at problem solving again low intelligence would be relatively poor at decision making at judgment and again at problem solving so this is what alfred bene actually tried to say with this illustration we can see that they we have a fund of intelligence which kind of consist of various abilities and examples could be decision making abstract thinking judgment problem solving etc so you know the level of abilities or the number of abilities would differ from one person to another and that is what is going to determine our level of intelligence so if we have more of these abilities we would be highly intelligent if we have moderate level of uh, you know moderate level of abilities or moderate number of abilities would be average we would have average intelligence and similarly if we have less number of abilities or less level of abilities if we possess a less level of abilities then we would be relatively poor at these abilities and therefore we will have low intelligence right so therefore everything depends on these one set of abilities that is why we call the theory as one factor theory of intelligence so now that we've covered the proponent of the theory alfred binet the name of the theory which is one factor or mono factor or uni factor theory of intelligence and thirdly we also covered what the theory talks about or what the theory brings about for the world of intelligence the last thing if you guys remember that we had to cover was the criticism of the theory actually it's pretty uh, you know predictable after you know getting to know this theory you would actually be able to make a judgment call that what is the major criticism criticism of this theory because many of us think that what is going on how can intelligence be so simple right how can it, how can we just define intelligence with the help of one similar set of abilities is that even possible actually guys that was the major criticism criticism of this theory that it was rather simple it was rather simple so we can say that it was a bit vague it was very broad and many psychologists say that it does not do justice to the world to the complex world of intelligence right in fact alfred binet kind of you know even came up with a test his own test and when psychologists started using that test they kind of got to know that you know the data is not that simple as alfred binet says the data is very complex it is very multivariate that is why this criticism kind of came about that you know intelligence cannot be that simple intelligence cannot be quantified or identified with just with the with the help of just one similar set of abilities it cannot be that easy it cannot be that vague broad and that is the major criticism of this theory that it was very very simple and it could not do justice to the complex world of intelligence and guys that is all for this video and in the next video we would be continuing with the second theory that falls under the psychometric approach hope you guys liked it and again if you guys want to share your insights please uh, i welcome those insights and i'll i'll really love it if you could share some and again if there are any doubts i would be glad to you know kind of answer the same or help you with them so thank you for watching and see you